Today I'm going to give you case studies on complete streets from around the US. Traffic engineers call them context sensitive design. These streets are more than just conduits for cars, they are social hubs, generators of economic activity, and real places. In my work for CNU, the Congress for the New Urbanism, I wrote about seven examples. We look for places where context-sensitive ideas had been fully implemented in urban, suburban, and small town areas. These were automobile-oriented thoroughfares prior to the redesigns. We look for some of the best examples where context-sensitive design principles had been implemented in a comprehensive way. We gathered before and after data. We looked at design and implementation, including the political context, hurdles that were overcome, cost, and funding. In San Diego, a wide thoroughfare made a barrier between neighborhoods and the beach. The barrier was bridged by a road diet. Five lanes of traffic on La Jolla Boulevard were reduced to one lane in each direction. New sidewalks, lots of landscaping, and plenty of on-street parking were added. Five intersections were converted to roundabouts along the section of thoroughfare. Traffic calming was installed on parallel streets to manage potential spillover traffic. The political purpose was a desire to provide easier access to the beach and to revitalize businesses along the corridor. Traffic mishaps and crashes dropped by 90% despite no change in traffic volume. Walking, bicycling, transit use, and retail sales all jumped after completion of the project. In Cincinnati, we looked at a former streetcar suburb on Madison Road. The town center had a small park in the form of an esplanade that had been whittled away by decades of road widening. Here was the approach to that town center and the patch of green in the middle of the asphalt. The park was doubled in size to make it usable again and travel lanes were narrowed and one lane was eliminated. There are two travel lanes in both directions now. Local concerns about pedestrian safety provided the political purpose for the redesign. Plus, people wanted a usable park again. Vehicle operating speeds dropped. Crashes decreased 44%. Businesses have revived around the square since the project was completed in 2010. Traffic volumes are slightly higher than they were before at 23,000 vehicles per day. In the village of Hamburg, New York, the New York State DOT implemented traffic calming on a U.S. highway that goes through the heart of the village. Four roundabouts were installed at traffic light intersections and travel lanes were narrowed. On-street parking was increased and new buffer lanes provide room between the parking and the travel lanes. These are not bicycle lanes, by the way. The main purpose is to slow traffic. Judging by increased bicycle activity, the slower traffic makes the street more comfortable for cyclists as well. The makeover was spurred by a proposed widening of the roadway that shook up the citizens and village leaders. The village feared more traffic and loss of on-street parking. They said, hold on, we need a plan B. So they worked with consultants and DOT and everybody agreed on the current project. Injury crashes plummeted after the project was built in 2009. Commercial building permits rose by 500%. Not a bad result. In Dallas, we focused on Greenville Avenue, an area that began as a suburb back in the 1920s. A section of the street was rebuilt over the last five years. Four travel lanes were reduced to two. Sidewalks were widened. Bulb outs and brick pavers were installed at intersections, and on-street parking was doubled, and landscaping and trees were planted. The political purpose for the redesign came from local concerns about the character of the thoroughfare, which was heavily focused on nightlife. Intoxication at 2 a.m. led to crime. The street makeover was part of an effort to change the image of the area and make it family friendly. Along with the street redesign, police protection was pumped up, and policies cut down on late night business activity. Violent crime fell nearly 90%, property values rose, and average vehicle speeds dropped significantly. Dallas is now implementing similar street redesigns in other areas. 
in Lancaster, California, a mid-sized suburban municipality, a main thoroughfare through the center was completely transformed. Here's what it looked like before. Here's what it looks like now. Five travel lanes were reduced to two, and a center esplanade was built with diagonal parking, trees, and lighting. The design was inspired by the Rambles, a boulevard in Barcelona, Spain. Since Lancaster is a sprawling U.S. suburban place with a name that comes from England, naturally they use Spain as a model. Maybe not, but it works. The political purpose came from a desire to reclaim the city's main street for people and boost the economy. The mid-sized city, built mostly since 1950, had few features to create a sense of place prior to the project. The makeover of Lancaster Boulevard has lit the local economy. The $11 million project helped to attract nearly 2,000 jobs, some 50 businesses, and substantial residential construction, according to a state report. Meanwhile, injury crashes were cut in half. Events take place on the boulevard several times a week, and major festivals are held throughout the year with 20 to 30,000 attendees. It has become the social heart of Lancaster. In Raleigh, North Carolina, a wide suburban arterial separating the North Carolina State University campus from city neighborhoods was transformed through traffic calming techniques. Travel lanes were reduced from four to two, and lanes were narrowed. On-street parking was placed on both sides of the street instead of one, and buffer slash bicycle lanes were added to the mix. Sidewalks were widened. A new center median gives way to short turning lanes at intersections. Curb extensions reduce crossing distances, and two roundabouts were built. A pedestrian fatality got the ball rolling politically, and the street was listed as one of the most dangerous in the state for pedestrians by the state DOT. If you get on the most dangerous list, that motivates people to change. After the redesign, vehicle crashes fell by 23%. The street still carries 26,000 vehicles per day, but cars go slower, especially around the roundabouts. A ton of development has occurred along the corridor. In South Miami, Florida, a change in thoroughfare design created a Main Street character where pedestrians feel comfortable. Dorn Avenue, a one-way side street, was converted to brick. A 23-foot wide lane was reduced to 11 feet and trees were planted. On Sunset Drive, the main thoroughfare, five travel lanes were converted to three lanes and lanes were narrowed. The political purpose came from a desire to revitalize the town center. The changes have boosted safety and have dramatically changed the character of South Miami. Streets with no shade and high exposure to traffic are now lined with cafe tables and alive with pedestrians. Traffic volume is still high, but speeds are low, and on-street parking and trees protect people sitting and on foot. Total long-term redevelopment and investment in the area called Hometown is estimated at $1 billion. South Miami has become a destination, and the redesigned thoroughfare has played an important role. Projects like this are still few and far between relative to conventional thoroughfares, and they have a lot to teach us. CNU worked with the Institute for Transportation Engineers on a new book called Implementing Context-Sensitive Design on Multimodal Corridors, a Practitioner's Handbook. This is a valuable new resource that follows on an ITE CNU recommended practice called Designing Walkable Urban Thoroughfares, which was released about seven years ago. The new book has much more than case studies, and I recommend you check it out at www.ite.org. I'm Rob Studeville, editor of Public Square, a CNU journal. Thanks for listening.